Welcome to a noob's guide to Zatan the Black. This is Zartan the Black, commander of the Tower of Zar. Or maybe it's Zahatan. Zatan? You know what? It doesn't really matter. In Chaos Dwarf society, the ranking goes Hashut, High Priest Astragoth, the other sorcerer prophets, and then everyone else is two steps above orc laborer as far as they're concerned. So pronunciation is optional. Xanatan the Black may be the most pitiless warrior to ever tread the blackened earth of the Darklands, but in his boss's eyes, he's mostly a useful tool. In every sense of the word. But when he's not laughing as you fall down a flight of stairs, Zahitan the Black is a playable legendary lord in the Forge of the Chaos Dwarfs DLC for Total War Warhammer 3. In this video, we'll go over his lore and how that's been translated to gameplay, but since there are so many new mechanics introduced in the DLC, we'll focus on what Zahitan the Black specializes in, oppressing workers and controlling the means of production. I'm sure he's fine. Back in the one and only Chaos Dwarfs army book ever released, Zertan the Black was the hard-hitting melee lord you could field with maximum hostility, as he had the hates everyone trait, a rule usually reserved for fascist dictators and Six Flags employees. But this is from when the Chaos Dwarfs were still inspired by the brightly colored designs of Mesopotamia and Assyria, which is why he's flying more color than a pride parade. Of course, since then, Games Workshop reduced the Chaos Dwarf color palette to Four Shades of Grimdark. Insidious acts of cruelty are everyday occurrences in the Plain of Zarduk, where thousands of slaves, I I'm sorry, I mean laborers, are forced into pitch black mines and worked until they die from beatings, exhaustion, or the nauseous fumes that fill the pits. So maybe laborers isn't a strong enough word, actually. There, that's better. But even amongst such wanton cruelty, there is one whose deeds of brutality stand out. Zahak Tan the Black, a Chaos Dwarf so merciless, the local Chaos Dwarf restaurant had to rename their baby back ribs for false advertising. But he is able to send out an extra convoy at the start of the game, so the human cost is totally worth it, right? Zahatin the Black started his career as the right-hand dwarf of Gorth the Cruel, a particularly potent sorcerer prophet responsible for the regular blood sacrifices to their god Hashut. That's where Zahatan the Black came in, providing the necessary bodies and blood. It's said that when Gorth presided over the sacrifices, that the only thing louder than the screams of his victims was the sound of Zahatan the Black laughing at them. In the spirit of caring for absolutely no one but himself, Zatanna the Black has one of the most selfish, unique skill lines ever put into the game. Subtlety is not a word in his personal lexicon, as he hacks and cleaves foes like a Benny Hanna chef. But Zack the Black was always kept busy by his master's insatiable demand for fresh slaves, just in case. A task he took to with gusto, crushing the local orc armies and goblin tribes so thoroughly, they agreed to skip the whole fighting part from now on and just send thousands of regular tributes back to Zarnagrund to keep the odds ever in their favor. These military convoys of goods are based on the Cathayan caravan mechanic and allow you to exchange armaments, raw materials, slaves, and gold for any combination of the aforementioned that you desire. Pick a destination and off the convoy rolls through upcoming dilemmas and quests to return with your chosen resource at the end. Though its main benefit is in selling huge amounts of cheaply made weaponry at a discount price to both sides in a distant conflict to ensure a never-ending profit stream. Zard Zardoz the Black's holistic approach to personal betterment seems to have worked for him, though, because in Total War Warhammer 3, he's no longer just Gorth the Cruel's lackey. He was sending back so much supplies and labor that Gorth couldn't keep up with the production, so he did what any boss would do when faced with a rising talent, handed him a ceremonial obsidian axe, and then quietly transferred him to another department. Why? I know what you're going to say, but the fact is, you've been making us all look bad. Cut free of what few Chaos Dwarf ethics regulations still held him, he declared himself Zatan the Black and insists that it should be pronounced as Master by all the slaves he now captures. Because in his campaign, having more slaves than a southern plantation owner is how you measure victory. He even invented a new kind of sadistic slave-catching snare with fish hooks in it. 
A regular net would do the same thing, but the hooks make it hurt more, and that's his whole point. It lowers the melee defense of anyone it lands on and pins them in place, allowing him to recreate his favorite scene from Planet of the Apes. That's where the Chaos Dwarf labor system mechanic comes in. See those shackles up there? They're not the fun kind, and when clicked, you'll bring up a screen that shows you every province in your control, how revolting its slaves are, and how many of those poor buggers you need to keep around to operate at maximum efficiency. You can acquire more slaves through winning battles, raiding enemy lands, or buying them through the convoy system, which, now that I've said it aloud, is actually historically accurate. You then direct this labor into the province where they're needed most, trading them around like human cattle in a callous contempt of intelligent life. But if you have more workers than needed in a province, your control slips away, since the slaves will have the downtime necessary to realize that they have more bodies than their Chaos Dwarf overseers have bullets. Zatan the Black and company keep these would-be Sporticus thoughts to a minimum with labor actions, allowing you to sell your slaves to distant lands for gold, sacrifice them in the name of the Dark Father Hashut, or work them to death and instantly construct a building. Because where there's a whip, there's a whip. and the game lets you do this every turn for every province throughout the entire campaign. Because Total War won't make an actual American Civil War game, but hardliner religious secessionists building a triangle trade system that preys on supposedly subhuman savages has no baggage attached to it whatsoever. Oh look, it's the guy Zatan decorates his beard with. So that's where all the pygmies in Warhammer went. Oh Zatan, you rascal. A Chaos Dwarf economy built entirely on exploited labors has the same benefits that it does today, cheaper production costs, which is how you're able to recruit war machines for half their normal price. It's telling, though, that he doesn't get any unique upgrades for them outside of the ones every other Chaos Dwarf gets, as Zatan the Black appears to be one of God's perfect middle managers. He doesn't need to know how the machines work, just that they do. And if they ever don't, he'll micromanage his team with meetings and beatings until that changes. Good managers play to their strengths, after all. That's also why he gets an extra recruitment slot at the game's start. You can't unlock any good units via the Hellforge mechanic until later, so instead he and you should use that extra recruitment capacity to fill his army full of sacrificial cannon fodder to run at his enemies while he rains a barrage of Hellfire onto their exact position. He'll know when the artillery is dialed in by the volume of their screams. As the melee lord of the Chaos Dwarfs DLC, Zatan is also certainly good at beating people off. Armored and shielded, Zatan is built to walk up to enemy lords and whack them about. When coupled with his unique items, there is no lord too big for him to handle. The armor of Gazrak has stats to swallow any blows, regardless of their size, and the longer Zatan is beaten, the more he can take, while the Chaos Dwarf Rune Shield lets him pull a Star Fox barrel roll on incoming projectiles, dodging any contact effects before they can land on his mighty beard hair. But the thing all of his enemies rightly fear is to be pounded by Zatan's long black axe. Made from minerals spit from the loins of Hashut, each time you kill someone with the obsidian axe, Zatan gains more melee attack and armor-piercing damage for that battle. And since he never takes his hands off that mighty dark shaft, it's a small wonder he's called Zatan the Black. Once Zatan gets a few levels and supersized Big Macs under his belt, he's big enough that you're going to need a mount to get him around the battlefield. You can choose from either a Great Taurus or a Lamassu. Neither of them get names, because if you name something, it's a pet. And to Zatan, these are just flying hamburgers that his slaves haven't grilled yet. But the one with the face has additional magic resistance, and coupled with all Zatan's armor-piercing damage, you should probably think of these flying mounts as furry vengeance delivery vehicles. But by that point in your campaign, you're unlikely to ever encounter anything that can stop you, as you'll be cutting through enemies like a fruit ninja master, and blow through laborers faster than a sweatshop trying to launch a new iPhone. That's what Zatan brings to the table 
end-stage capitalism, where everything in a society is geared to support the machine. A machine that will literally roll over top of you and grind you to bits if you get in its way. So embrace it, because at least here, you'll be playing the guy laughing his head off at the top of the pile. Because if there's one thing you can say about Zatan the Black, it's that he clearly loves his job and is very good at it. And now, so are you, because this has been a noob's guide to Zatan the Black. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to be notified about future releases, or if you watch them regularly, consider joining the Patreon and vote on which lord comes next. But regardless, thanks for watching.